We found a JDM rally car sitting in this barn for the last seven years. So we decided to pull it out, take it back to our shop and completely detail it. But we found so many surprises along the way, like what came flying out of the exhaust when we tried to start it for the first time in almost a decade. A mouse just came out of the exhaust. Oh my gosh. And then after two days of hard work, getting this car looking perfect again, the owner wanted to show us what it was really built for. So we started the day by first hopping in the side-by-side -side with Sam, the owner, and he took us around his 400-acre property, eventually showing us the barn where the bug eye was sitting. And when we got there and opened it up, we got to see her for the first time. Instantly, we were hit by a horrible smell, and you can see all the dust on the car. So we needed to find out from Sam why it was left in this barn. So guys, we're here with Sam, the owner. It's here on his farm. How do you let this car get like this? I had kids. Oh, yeah. I bought this car when I was 16 years old, fell in love with it, traveled around the country with it, and had to be an adult. At 16, I bought it in Dayton, Ohio. I wrecked it in Georgia, allegedly. I was sitting on a city bus driving to college and I saw it sitting there on the sidewalk a year later and I bought it in Hawaii. This is the second version <laughs> after uh, the first one met its untimely demise. I think in 2007, I remodeled the whole thing and it got beat up from there and then just, nah, this is where it's at now. So now that we know the backstory, we can hook our trailer winch up to it and start pulling the WRX out. And if you didn't know, I have a 2017 WRX. So when we got back to the the shop we compared the two all right guys the Subaru's in the trailer and we're headed back to the shop all the way back to cleveland we got a three hour drive ahead of us but it gives me time to tell you guys that we are taking the show on the road as well so not only are we going to pick these cars up take them back to our shop but we want to bring the shop to you so if you have something really spectacular that's been left in a barn or left in a garage and is just covered in dust and dirt we want to detail it we'll come to you we'll tow the car to a local garage that we rent out we'll film the whole entire video do the detail all for free and then bring it back to you to get your reaction so if you guys have any leads please hit us up at our email or our instagram or somewhere on the screen uh because we'd love to meet you we'd love to see your car and we'd love to work on it and make it look brand new all right guys so we're back at the shop we have my car next to the old subaru mine's a 2017 it's a little bit like comparing apples to oranges because i've had mine wrapped there's a ton of stuff done to it it's actually world rally blue underneath we're gonna start talking a little bit about what i like better about this one and that one so i actually think that my headlights are way better than these ones because I never liked the big circular ones. So Brent's gonna be wrong a lot, but in this case, I, I'm not exactly a fan of the bug eye. I love the headlights because it was the first Subaru in America, the first Subaru WX rather. They signify like the start of rally car culture in the US, at least for WRXs, but they weren't my favorite either. I had a 2004 that had the blob eye. It's actually the same exact car, except the front clip and the headlights are different. That's the one I'll give you. And I was never into super old WRXs, but I do like, now that I'm looking, at the two side by side that they kept the hood scoop on both of them even though it's a little bit different yeah so yours is integrated this one obviously is kind of just mounted to the hood itself but what's kind of cool in 2002 and 2003 when these came to america they didn't have an sti version that didn't come until 2004 with the introduction of the EJ25, which was the STI motor. This is the EJ20, two liter. The STI was a 2.5 liter. But what's kind of cool is this is the WRX hood scoop. The STI in 2004 is like about like a, a half inch higher and it juts out about an inch further. So it was, they wanted you to know this was an STI. Does this car have any rust on it at all? These are notorious for rusting out, like a lot of Japanese cars from the early 2000s. Not only do these tend to be rust buckets, but usually by the second, third, fourth owner, they became a lot cheaper and kids molested them, ruined them, and then they also rusted out like crazy. In the case of this car, there's only a little bit of surface rust on this quarter panel, this rear quarter panel, and it's not structural. It looks like it just got bumped and bruised and then you know the steel underneath started to rust. Here guys, come to the back and let's take a look at the two. So of course this is my car and I personally really like the wing on it. I put this wing on, it's not an STI, but I just like how it's so big and in your face and it has the supports, but that also has a pretty cool wing too. In this case, this has a WRX wing, which I think is probably the coolest wing they ever put on a WRX, but obviously the STI of the next year had the classic big, 
box. I mean, it was seriously just a rectangle on the back. It was so rally car, I, I loved it. Off the top of my head, I actually don't know what year they stopped putting spoilers on the base model WRX. I mean like an actual spoiler, a wing, because mine didn't come with a wing, obviously. Oh. If you guys know, leave a comment down below the last model or generation they put a wing on the car rather than just these little duck bills when they came stock, because I actually don't know. And one of the last things that I know for sure that this car doesn't have that mine does, besides the little YouTube logo in the headlight that I had put in there, is this. Ready? Voila. His 2003 does not have the lights that I put on this car, and I can change them to do whatever I want. Anyways, enough looking at the cars. I think that we should pull mine out of the garage, get this in place, start cleaning it, and see what's underneath all this dust. See what a gem this actually is and why it's better than your car. I also like my yellow better. <laughs> it's not even the real paint. It's still better yellow. Now we're gonna put the car on dollies so we can move it over. And we decided to do a wheels off detail, so we put it on jack stands and pull the wheels off before starting to clean the car. Dang, I think that proves mine's better. My wheels just come right off. And then we fully cleaned the wheels and then Mike came up with an idea to make them presentable for the final reveal. All right, so I'm here with the wheels off the Subaru and they have seen better days. They are in really rough shape. The owner said that he just wanted to plasti dip them. It looks like somebody tried to refinish them at one point. So what I'm gonna do is kind of knock down some of these heavy high ridges with some 400 grit sandpaper, alcohol prep them, and just throw a layer of plasti dip on them. Probably five layers of plasti dip just so they're all evenly coated and nice and black. So we're just gonna clean them up a wee bit, but they're gonna look way better. So right now we're just spraying it down with a little bit of IPA, which is just our alcohol mix. And we're just gonna wipe down all the excess. Again, these are far, far, far from perfect, but it'll do the job. All right, now we're just going to tape off the tire so we don't get plastic dip all over everything, the tire and the air filler cap. And then we can start spraying our Plasti Dip. Test sprays. Whenever you're plastic dipping, you wanna do light coats. Don't put the stuff on heavy or it'll drip and it'll look terrible. And while that first coat dries, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the wheel wells really good and then start washing all the dirt and dust off the car.
And while we're over here, we'll hit an easy to miss spot, which is behind the gas door. And lastly, we hit the roof, but as you can imagine in the real world, we wouldn't hit the roof last. We would start there. But if we did that first, all the dust on the car would have gotten washed away and you guys wouldn't get to see this awesome detail. This is the EJ20. Subaru, at this time, I'm pretty sure this is the only engine that they offered stateside in their WRX because they didn't have an STI. But the EJ20 is a 2.0 liter four-cylinder boxer motor. You got the top mount intercooler. I remember back in the day, a lot of guys would relocate that, cut this out, and put a big front mount intercooler. You'd have some really cool piping that would go down to the front mount. Supposedly, the sucker will run. Yeah, I think we'll be able to get this thing running. It has some small modifications on it, but a lot of these older Subarus have a ton of stuff. So luckily not too much. I think if we just do some fluid checks and just make sure everything's in proper order that we'll be able to get it started and get it moving. Every time someone tried to make power with this, they'd blow up the transmission. Transmissions could not handle a lot of power. And honestly, these engines really couldn't hold much more than about 300 horsepower anyway. So it's a good thing he only just did this reroute of the cold air intake. <coughs> because uh, I think she'll run strong, yeah. So to clean the engine, we're gonna pop out the old battery and you don't wanna use a pressure washer in the engine bay with the power connected anyways. And then after it's clean, we'll send Mike to AutoZone to get a brand new battery. So later on, we can try and get this thing started. And we noticed there was a very heavy smell of rat urine coming from the engine, but it wasn't until after we cleaned it that we found out where it was actually coming from. I pulled the wiper blades off because I figured we should clean these up a little bit better and then repaint them since they're pretty jacked up. But then I thought, okay, we'll also pull the, uh, the wiper blade shroud or whatever. I was like, I'll pull that off too. We'll clean it up a little bit better as I was lifting it off. You know how this whole engine base smells like mice? Yeah, it's terrible. Like really bad actually. Well, well, that's disgusting. That is, Brian, if you come up on this side. Bleh. <laughs> Dude, that, is, that huge pile is that, definitely all poop. That is just, that's about half a pound of quality mouse dookie. Dude, <laughs> it's wet and that makes it way grosser. Yuck. All right, so it's been about a half hour. That's what the can says to wait about a half hour between coats. We're about to lay down the second coat. Go ahead and start spraying it on. And with the second coat of Plasti Dip drying, we're gonna go ahead and take off the wing so we can clean underneath it and polish the deck.
Now with the car washed, we're gonna go ahead and clean up these headlights because they're super foggy. And if you wanna do exactly what we're doing, you might wanna write this down because RJ did quite a few steps. So he started by wet sanding with 600 grit sandpaper, then 1000 grit, then 1500. Then he used a rotary compound and a DA finish. And then after all that was done, he coated it with a UV protectant coating to prevent from yellowing and oxidation again. Now it's time to move to the inside of the car, which was top three worst smelling cars we've ever dealt with. And we found a nice surprise underneath and behind the back seats. Oh, dude, it looks like Stinky Pete was living down there. Oh, wow. Oh. Here, give it a jiggle. You see that? Holy smokes. They're everywhere. Dude, that's so gross. Having found all that, step one is to just vacuum up everything we possibly can. And now we're gonna clean the floor mats so they can dry for a while. And we even brought something back that you guys haven't seen in quite a bit.
And now we can hit the rims with the last layer of Plasti Dip before letting them completely dry and taking the tape off. And you have to admit, they look so much better than when we started. And while we had the paint out, we also did the windshield wipers and redyed the shroud that goes below them. And for the seats, there's probably a ton of mouse urine in them, so we're gonna go ahead and use the vacuum first and then tornador it to get any of the extra stuff out. Then we're gonna use our extractor soap on it, followed by the drill brush to agitate it into the fibers and suck it all away with the extractor with only hot water in it. And then we'll clean the interior from top to bottom, starting with the doors, then the steering wheel, then the center console, and then finishing by extracting the carpets. And don't worry, we're gonna ozone this thing at the end of the detail.
Moving back to the exterior, the owner asked if we could take off this Hawaii sticker, so we used our steamer with a plastic razor and then some Goo Gone, and it came right off after polishing. And while RJ was removing the sticker, I was cleaning the tailpipes, not knowing what surprise would plop out of there when we started the car for the first time. Now with everything done, we're going to put the WRX back together and take it to Sam and get his final reaction. All right, we're back from AutoZone. I just put a new battery and checked all the fluids on the Subaru, and I think we're ready to try to get it started. RJ, give it a go. It's not gonna blow. It. Is it, it doesn't, is it idle? Nice! It sounds so neutered without exhaust on there. That's a stock exhaust. Dude, a mouse just came out of the exhaust. Right, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Oh my gosh. It's a dead mouse. It's dead and it was in the exhaust. Oh no. That's nutty. Dude. I, I can't believe it. I wish you would have seen it shoot out. Dude. Oh my gosh, it's alive. It just moved. Oh, there's still stuff going out of it. Mm. Oh my gosh, he's alive. Oh, poor buddy. Alright, we got him. He might be okay. Where yeah. are you taking him, Mike? We're gonna take him outside. Alright, so we just finished up the car. I got to take it on a quick drive after we eradicated the mouse that was stuck in the exhaust. Uh, but real quick, before we head out for the day, we're gonna throw in this ozone generator. We're gonna go to dinner. Brent will come back and take it out. But this will help with the barn smell that is still in the car. At the least, so it will kill any bacteria that's making that smell. Uh, and help purify the car a little bit. All right guys, back with Sam. We have a lot to show you. There's a lot of things we found, a lot of things we did that we don't usually do on cars, but I think the end result is sweet. I think you're really gonna like it, so. Without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and, and show your car. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> it's like a whole new car. <laughs> The wheels look any different to you? Oh my God. Looks we like it came off the showroom floor. <laughs> Man. Been a long time since it looked like that, huh? Very long time. <laughs> Very long time. Yeah, so obviously you knew what the outside looked like and then what the wheels looked like. So we went ahead, we pulled those off, we put it on jack stands, we actually pressure washed underneath, we painted the wheels, redid the headlights and removed all that oxidation so you can actually utilize them and use them. You had a lot of rodents in here and a lot of, a lot of mice were making their home in there, but we evicted them all. So. No, that, the smell's gone. It looks freaking amazing. <laughs> Makes me want to finish it and go through the whole engine and 
get this thing like it is running as good as I can. I mean, I know they got that old saying, like you're putting lipstick on a pig. This is completely different. Yeah. This is whole next <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah, but, we uh, we were very happy with the end result. I was amazed how quick you guys did that. <laughs> that was we, impressive. <laughs> we moved fast. What, what was it, Monday? Monday yeah, Monday we were here Monday and it's Thursday. Thursday. So picked it up, drove all the way back, cleaned it, and got it back by Thursday afternoon, so. Is it just like you remember it? And as we were filming our outro, Sam kind of pulled something unexpected on us, and I'm just going to let you guys watch until the end. <laughs> oh my god! This transmission is going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> Not clean anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, we might have to redo the outro then. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Well, we weren't gonna rally it, but uh, Sam had other ideas. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> if, uh, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, uh, please hit like. And if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And thank you for watching.